just yeah. that one line. Well, Old Times runs at the Harold Pinter Theatre until the 6th of April. Go once or go twice. For many, the 1930s Britain image conjures up oh, country houses struggling through, the country struggling through tough economic times. Yet we see little of this in Stephen Polyakov's new BBC Two series, Dancing on the Edge. Set in London, this five-part drama draws on the relatively unknown stories of the black, mostly American jazz musicians who captured the attention of the high society crowd with their intoxicating new sounds. The story focuses upon the rise to fame of the Lewis Lester band. Chiwetel Ejiofor plays the quietly confident Londoner Lewis, while Matthew Good takes on the role of the ambitious young journalist Stanley, who promotes the band in his magazine Music Express. One of our first ever homegrown colour bands shook the room with their intensity and showed that this kind of music could appeal to a much larger audience than it presently enjoys. You're homegrown, that's right, isn't it? Yes, in a way, I was born here. And so was I. But he's lost his birth certificate. Somewhere it's gone missing. I've got to find it someday. Dancing on the Edge is very much an ensemble piece. Alongside the suave Anthony Head, John Goodman plays the enigmatic Mr. Masterson and Mel Smith, the hotel owner, Mr. Schlesinger. I met Harold Voigt from the Cecil the other day. He couldn't believe, could absolutely not believe, that I had coloured musicians staying in this hotel. Just down the road at the Savoy Theatre, people are walking out of Othello even as we speak because the coloured actor, was named uh, Robeson, is kissing his Desdemona. Polyakov wrote and directed the whole series, which runs to six hours, a commission that's relatively unheard of in British television. Set in an age when racist attitudes would have been the norm, the series explores the unlikely relationships that were formed between black jazz musicians and the aristocracy in 1930s Britain, revealing a progressive attitude that was perhaps ahead of its time. Wind blows round the steeple, empty world and sleepy people. Awake and Dancing on the Edge is a period drama that tackles an extraordinary time of change in British history. But do its themes of economic depression, immigration and an obsessive celebrity culture still resonate today? Right, it's got all things that Polyakov loves. It's the 1930s, he's got aristos, he's got country houses, he's got photographs, he's got trains. But is he use them all in a fresh way? But it's good. Yeah. Hooray! Last th th thing I saw of Polyakov was a, a play with Tracy Ullman in it. It was uh, so bad I thought that <laughs> some... I actually thought that somebody had just... Uh, it was a drama school student that had written it. This is great. It's really, mm. it's really seductive, you know, all the way that you kind of want this television to be. So everybody's really good looking. The clothes are mm. absolutely gorgeous. The music is really great. It takes you on a kind of quite a slow journey, but quite an interesting one. It's an interesting time. Mm -hmm. in in kind of uh, English history and one of the things I thought was really lovely at the beginning is you you associate jazz with America of course especially black jazz and to have that taken over to America and actually put in kind of Aristo's mm -hmm. house it's like it's kind of you know perfect television I have to say. Zoe I completely disagree <laughs> I absolutely hated this um, <laughs> I would have turned it off after 30 seconds if but I hadn't why? been reviewing it I just found I don't know I find the sort of fetishization of this old retro image of the aristocracy where yes they're privileged and yes maybe they're lazy but they're glamorous so who cares I find that really difficult to stomach mm. but there's a bit that, but I think what's interesting about it is that that there's an element where that is undermined so there's a there's a a, a kind of a couple of scenes where what you get is these posh aristos going, we're really illiberal. I don't, I don't mm. know if you've noticed that mm. we're really liberal because we love you, but out, out there, there's lots of people that aren't really like us. And I think that that is really resonant, mm. and still very true in society today. Really? That you have that. That you have that. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting. I kind of I think I'm a bit in the middle here yeah. because I was really interested in Polyakov doing this because I think it's such an interesting mm. period. And it's interesting because it's this notion of jazz coming from America. But if I'm not wrong here, I think they would have based the life on the Chiwetel Ejiofor character on, on Leslie Hutchinson, yeah. Hutch, who was actually from Grenada mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's missing for me, and I'm like Miranda, I love it. 
But I'm wondering with the musicians, they all feel like they're just musicians at yeah. the moment and that they're reacting to other people. Well, are they going to become full of people? Are we going to well, find out a bit more about their backstory, because, uh, really? Because obviously um, uh, the women, uh, Angel Colby and also Wumi uh, Musaku, are featured. Obviously Chiwetel's featured, but the rest of the band... I mean, they're, they're, just, they're, 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 they're like just, instruments. You just see an instrument like instruments, out there. And, yeah. and yeah. you could fairly yeah. say that none of the white characters is unexplored at all. Hmm. No, not really. So I'm interested about that because I'm interested in the whole thing about in drama, in British drama, in British telly. Why have we got so many black actors fleeing this country and going over mm. to the States? Because I think they get real... Parts. This is great, this drama, but once again, it is about mm -hmm. using black actors to explore ethnicity and race in inverted commas. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting, actually, if you compare it with Flight, mm -hmm. where, yes. where that's, it's completely it unmentioned. Yeah. You, didn't yeah. notice, you, yeah. you didn't notice no. that it's black and white. Well. But because of, this is the nature of this story, of course. Yeah, of and course, actually, it's period really as well. But the, the centre performance of Chuatel is just extraordinary, and Polyakov yeah. knows how absolutely yeah. stunning no, is. his yeah. performance is, yeah. and he is, and he holds these images of yeah. him yeah. beautifully. Yeah, beautifully. I mean, I have to say, you know, even if you, you know, even if you're not kind of interested in this story, to be honest, you know, if you're a straight woman, you're fine. You've yeah. got two really hot leads being yeah. hot. And speaking as a journalist, and particularly a music journalist, you've got a music journalist being really cool. This is very unusual. This never well, happens on screen. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at, um, because obviously racism is threaded throughout the, the performance. And here is Chuata listening to actually talking about what actually happened. And you can imagine this absolutely did happen. You must have had to deal with a lot of prejudiced people. Of course. Yes. And you never know where it's going to come from either. Sometimes it's the people you don't expect. I remember bumping into a table when I was coming off the stage at one of the crossings. And the couple nearest to me, and the lady, she was covered in jewels, but she was very young, charming looking. And both of them, this couple, started wiping their cutlery with their napkins. Even though I wasn't anywhere near them, they changed them a few minutes later too. Just to be sure. Well, that's very revealing. Now, don't, that, don't you think that I mean, it's very simply done, very mm. low key? No, it was soapbox uh, moment for me. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. soapbox yeah. moment. And all of a sudden I thought, oh my gosh, what's happening to this drama? <laughs> and then after that you get Anthony Head talking and he mm. goes into this big, long speech about racism and I thought, stop. But Stop. I, think, well, I, think, well, I think the problem with it is that the musicians are just too deferential. Mm -hmm. They're just too grateful for this royal and aristocratic patronage. Mm -hmm. And I know maybe this will change as the, the series progresses because we've only watched the first two episode, episodes. But I would have loved there to be some tension in their acceptance. But, of then well, was, there was. but then he got bumped. Yes. Bump, well, bump, what I thought was quite interesting with that, though, is that there's still an ambiguity about whether uh, the guy that wants to be the patient actually really did try exactly. and find his birth certificate and exactly. well, yeah. send him away. And you know what? He had no trouble in actually... But that's interesting. Him. The scene that we've just seen, I agree with you, is soapboxy, but the, the, the reason why I think it kind of works is actually the acting. So mm. what there's a kind of mm. layer that's given by these great actors that are basically saying, you know, this is soapboxy, but actually you can tell that this man is going to let them down. Mm. Look at him. Mm. He's going to let them down. Yeah. He's mm. being really liberal and lovely and, aren't mm. you great? You're my yeah. new lovely yeah. friends. And you know that later on he's just going to walk off and go and do something else. D in terms of performances, uh, singing... Phenomenal. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, I honestly, disagree. Again. Angel Coolby. I just, I, I, I mean, I just felt I love that kind of music and I love the music of that period. But I felt in order to really believe in the hype around this band, the music had to be completely outstanding. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think it, I thought it's shades into Muzak. Sorry. Oh, no. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, there were really good performances mm. in it. I thought but, she was great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Angela and actually and both of the, yeah both of the and Wumi Masaku yes. as well yes. I tell you what I loved about that wasn't it great to see a woman who looked like a woman on the yes. screen yeah. she wasn't one yes. of these sick people yeah. she looked gorgeous and I yes. thought yes let's have so, more women like that let, what, what Polikov always manages to do so brilliantly is, is locations lovely hot yeah. cameras and the look of the thing yeah. it, it, it looked like something you simply wanted to watch but it didn't mm. look like Downton Abbey Yes, I thought I was. I think it's quite interesting to compare it with Downton Abbey because Downton Abbey, the the relationships between the kind of uh, servants and masters mm. were really kind of contemporary, so mm. everybody was really nice to each other. Essentially, mm. you know, they really were liberals in the way that they po mm. possibly wouldn't have been. Uh, well, they definitely wouldn't have been at the time. And I think that maybe. I mean, maybe. Maybe I'm just incredibly excited because I'm seeing a Polyakov that I actually yeah. enjoy. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of hope 
that what will happen is these these relationships that seem so liberal, that seem so great, are going to be shattered, particularly by the fact that the kind of, you know, the war is coming, that things, the fascism is on the rise, that something will happen to shatter this and mm. it won't be quite what we think. I sincerely hope so. But <laughs> Dancing on the Age starts on BBC Two Monday night. Do try to catch it. The desire to settle in Britain is clearly one of its themes. These days, around 150,000 people take citizen tests in the UK every year, and candidates are expected to have a good knowledge of British history, culture and traditions. This week, the government published a new edition of Life in the United Kingdom, a book which claims to contain everything you need to know to pass the test, but as the guide paint a picture of Britain that we'd recognise. The new book is described by the Home Office as essential reading for migrants who have a good command of English and who hope to make a life permanently in the UK. The previous edition of the guide featured what the Home Office called mundane information on public transport timetables and water meters. But this has been 